had an email from the City Council saying the planning application for the statue has been successful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. City Council. Uh, anyway, Henrietta is one of the most significant women in the world. We should be forever grateful and acknowledge her for the contributions herself have made to global health. I hope you can see the passion, strength and power when you look at my interpretation of Henrietta. It's timely that today, 70 years on, we stand side by side with her family to celebrate Henrietta Lacks and remember she was more than herself. My connection with Henrietta's story began 24 years ago when a friend called David Duncan you? <laughs> recommended a BBC documentary called The Way of All Flesh. Henrietta Lacks, the, the documentary was about Henrietta Lacks. After hearing about how she had given humanity so much in her death, I decided to dedicate my life to telling her incredible story, using my art practice as a tool. In 2012, I travelled to America with my husband, John Rowe. There you are, John. <laughs> um, sorry. We had the honour of meeting 24 members of the Latz family. The family was so welcoming, and having some of them here today sharing this historical event is a true blessing, and the sun came out. As an, artist, as an artist, I struggled to obtain funding for my Henrietta Lacks project. This time last year, I feared that the project would not be funded. However, last October, at the launch of the exhibition of my paintings of Cleo Lake and Henrietta Lacks at the Wills Building, I was introduced to Jeremy and Judith. They agreed to help me honor Henrietta Lacks by commissioning me to make a bronze sculpture. At that point, I hadn't told them I'd never sculpted anything in my life. <laughs> there you go. From today, Bristol will forever be linked to Henrietta and the Latz family, a fantastic achievement for everyone involved in the project. And given her heritage as an African-American woman and Bristol's links to the slave trade, this is an important statement for Bristol. Bringing about change can be a slow process. However, my grandmother, my mother, and sister are from Jamaica. I have strong Jamaican blood running through my veins. This has helped me keep my focus and continue to fight justice. I'll never give up. I would like to thank the University of Bristol, most of all Jeremy and Judah, for having the courage, integrity, and understanding of the value, significance, and connection Henrietta Statue will evoke. Understanding the importance of commissioning me to make a statue of a black woman in a public space is a progressive step forward in the continuing fight for equality. I consider myself a Bristolian. You might have gathered that in my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Having spent most of my life living in the Bristol area, side me and all the leaders that are here, we are strong people. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> um, and Eastern Bristol, uh, another area that was looked down on, but we have strong people there as well. As a, gra a child growing up here, there are no statues of black women. So right now, knowing that my children and their children will be able to see the statue is fantastic for anyone who feels sidelined, exploited and ignored. I would also like to thank Lol Knockouts, Matt Healy, Anthony Stone and Luke Twigger for their incredible advice and expertise while I created the sculpture. They're here today. Could you make yourself known? Yeah. I have to say quickly, I've got two seconds, that working in that in their studio space was the highlight of my career. I, I got up every morning and I couldn't wait to just go to the studio. Matt is my was my kind of guide and taught me how to sculpt. He was hardcore, I have to say. My God, the only person that could properly take me on. But I remember one day I froze and I couldn't. I just couldn't sculpt. And um, he switched on the radio, and it was some kind of pod thing, and um, Henrietta's grand great granddaughter was speaking, Veronica, and that propelled me to carry on, and I could just hear Veronica's voice echoing around the studio while I was sculpting Henrietta, and I just knew that sometimes there's something more than you can explain something out there, and I felt very connected to Henrietta spiritually. My model, Nicola Thompson, thank you for being the perfect body reference for Henrietta. I know you're here somewhere. Yeah. Yes, there you go. And Jasmine Tukun from Nicole's hair. It's a moment I'll never forget. 
So when Nicole tried on, we got a suit from the BBC, which is an authentic 1950s suit, and they kind of said, oh yeah, most people don't really kind of fit into these suits, especially nowadays. When Nicola put the suit on, it, it fitted you like a glove, didn't it? And we were just like emotional then and emotional now, so thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Professor Craig McArdle for mentoring me and for showing me Henrietta Sells firsthand here in Bristol many years ago. Craig opened the scientific doors to my world. He introduced me to John Lane and Harry Meller, two more Bristol scientists who shared their knowledge of working with Henrietta Sells. A big shout out to my husband, John Rowe, my husband who listened to me talk about Henrietta for over 20 years, to support along with my family and friends has been invaluable. Norma Rowe, David Rowe, they're here today, they've travelled from Devon, I can see, yeah. <laughs> Otis, my son, and Ben, Anthony, and my adopted um, daughter, Sangeeta, um, and my whole family, and my whole friends, I, I, I couldn't do this without you all, you, you forever hit me up. Thank you, Francesca Hopkin, my friend and brilliant manager, for volunteering your time, support, and positive energy. I couldn't have done this without you, we've had a lot of laughs. So Thank you, Deborah Arnott, for volunteering your media advice for keeping me focused, stop, trying to stop me from being angry, trying to encourage me to smile when I don't like smiling naturally. Thank you. You're amazing. Joan Fieldthorne for mentoring and supporting me, also the owner of my Cleo Lake portrait. Cleo Lake, you have been instrumental in helping me finalise this project by highlighting my art practice and, chal and challenging any opposition. Thank you. Emma Henry and Alex and all the events team and all the university teams, the rich, there are at least three Richards that I need to thank. A big shout out to all the Bristol performers that were performing tonight. You're some of the most talented and spiritual artists I know. Chrissy Chris, Kinsman, uh, Sharon Winters, Ruth Pitter and your, your whole team. I hope I haven't missed um, anybody out. Um, a big shout out to all the Bristol performers. Okay, so that's right. Thank you, Caroline, for introducing me to Jerry and Judith and the Healer team for bringing members of the Lax family together. Anthony for keeping me sane. My mission continues to be to finish oil paintings of the Lax family and give those to their family so they can retain complete control of their legacy. 24 oil paintings I've dedicated my life to complete. I've only done 11 so far. I need to continue to landscape the area around the statue by planting red shrubs, trees, and plants in memory of Henrietta's favorite color, red, with the help of Annie Steele, Alan Steele. Secure an education program, which Judith has just said, has already initiated, for to go to the National Curriculum. Complete my documentary about the makeup of the Henrietta statue. The Henrietta Lack statue stands as a permanent reminder that black women contribute to society globally our feminine power cannot be suppressed anymore. May our ancestors continue to show us the way to walk. Thank you, Henrietta. We will never forget you. We finally have summer in Bristol where we can pay our respects to our ancestors. You're more than just a cell. Yeah.